Florence is a small and short indie game published by the fantastic folks over at Annapurna Interactive, who've published some utterly fantastic indie games, such as The Outer Wilds, The Pathless, and are working on a beautiful indie game known as Solar Ash. Anyway, Florence is a developed by a small Australian studio known as Mountains, and at the moment, Florence is the only game that they've ever made. They initially released the game only on some mobile devices, but last year it would come onto PCs and also the Nintendo Switch. The game itself only takes 40 minutes to beat, to about an hour to finish depending on how you do the various puzzles given to you. That might mean that this critique might not be too long, but that should be fine. Now let's dive straight into it. The game features a simply beautiful hand-drawn art style that definitely does well in complementing the other aspects of the game. The game takes the not very conventional tropes of a visual novel, a genre that doesn't seem to boast the most impressive of games, and actually makes a fantastic interactive video game. The art style is something that I'm definitely a big fan of. Bright, vivid and shining colours definitely radiate a sense of happiness for the majority of the game, and the art has the hand-drawn art style that many games in this age are known to have. The game has this art style that resembles a sketch comic book. Some of the puzzles in this game are solved and done by utilizing the mechanics that are seemingly created by the unique and beautiful art style. For instance, on the main character's first date, her name being Florence, we see that she has trouble talking to her eventual first love. In the game, this is drawn out as a puzzle for her to solve, and the game makes you arrange the colored pieces that float around the circuit conference of Florence's blank speech bubble, but once you put these pieces together, it gets the conversation to start flowing. To me, this is a fantastic way of utilizing a game's art style, while still adhering to the age-old conventions of the genre that this game's gameplay seemingly is attached to, that being the underused genre of a point and click. You click and drag the colored pieces to make a bubble that will make the player character speak. Although characters do seemingly speak to one another within the game, there is no voice acting, which was the perfect choice for a game such as this. It's supposed to be a game that you're going to play in one sitting, and moreover, it was designed for mobile devices. Mobile players are there for quick experience, not an insanely high quality game with professional voice acting. And no, games without voice acting definitely have the capability to still be extremely high quality, and Florence ultimately proves this point. But the way that Florence does this is ultimately through the utilization of its beautiful and fitting themes. There is a theme for each of the 20 chapters of the game, and each one does extremely well fitting the certain scenarios and sequences of the character in that particular chapter. This section is probably going to be extremely short. It's an interactive piece of media. The game is centered around the tropes of its engaging story, but the gameplay itself does fit well to serve such an idea. The gameplay consists of pointing and clicking your mouse, or dragging and clicking your mouse. Well, that's just really the gist of it. For instance, the game makes the player click on the sushi that the character eats, or makes the player switch between songs that the character is currently listening to, or to reveal the photo that is behind the blankness of a picture, the player just drags and holds their mouse over it to just reveal the underlying image, or to place certain objects around a room, or just cleaning up your room by clicking on the various objects that are scattered around it. The gameplay, unlike most other interactive video games, doesn't feature the supposedly annoying tropes of quick time events that are present in most games like Florence. However, the gameplay is mostly limited to the solving of puzzles within the game. There isn't too much variety to it all, and usually the puzzles are limited to combining many colored pieces together to make a speech bubble, or later in the game, putting already established speech bubbles shapes into their awaited blank spaces for when there is an argument between two characters. Florence's story is surely a short one, only ranging to about an hour long if you really take your time on those puzzles. But anyway, the game's story is really centered around the life experiences of one central character, Florence herself. She's a young 25-year-old who lives in an apartment and works the conventional job of a 9-to-5, and the game shows us the eventual dissatisfaction that she gets in her daily adult life. Nothing changes. She gets up, brushes her teeth, goes on the train while listening to her favorite tunes, then she does her boring 9 to 5 office job, she goes back home, eats, and then goes back to sleep, just to wake up to follow that exact same routine every single day. The game definitely does well in the first few chapters, showing us her dissatisfaction with her daily life, 
There's no spice to it. It's just doing the same thing over and over without anything changing between each day. Early on in the game, we're presented with her seemingly hidden and locked away passion for art and how she'd been fond of the medium ever since she was a child. After this, in chapter 3, we get quite a significant scenario. She's doing her usual thing of walking down the street with her pair of headphones while jamming to some tunes while walking. But her phone dies, so does the music, and as she walks away, she starts to hear music coming from the distance. Organic music that is someone is playing right there, live. Then we get this beautiful scene of her flying through the music notes in the air, leading her to the music. A musician named Krish is playing his violin passionately in public. Her fascination with Krish begins. In the next chapter, while riding her bike, she notices Krish and crashes. Krish runs over to help her, which ends in her getting his phone number. Then they go on their first date, which shows us that Florence is finally getting out of her shell. She begins to speak passionately to him. The date ends in their first kiss. Then as time flows, their relationship seemingly gets stronger. Ultimately, Florence is in itself about the first love of its nominal protagonist, and it takes the tropes of a coming-of-age tale and does something truly remarkable. But the game is also a story about maturity, moving on with life and even letting go, which in one of the later chapters of the game is what we see between our two seemingly in love characters. A fight proceeds, they stop and hug, but as their relationship seemingly goes on, it devolves and their old tightly connected bond falls apart. They live their own sad lives, their own routine, definitely not much different from her routine before. Another fight marks the end of their relationship. Krish moves out. But at the start of their relationship, it seemed that their passion for their interests was high, but by the end, that same relationship was the strain on them even being able to pursue their passion. Their relationship killed their passion, or so it did for Krish. But for Florence, although the grieving was long and treacherous, by the end, she found herself. She found who she was and what she truly wanted to be. She learned the extent of her talent and we see her move on, but still keep the fragments of her relationship, a relationship once so dear to her. Her passion evolves into her job and life, for her becomes the best it's ever been. While Krish, we simply don't know. But it's not about him, it's about the growth of Florence. So overall, I thought Florence was fantastic. It's a small game for sure, but what it has in store is more than enough by creating an area that is relatable to so many people, either it be the conventions of Florence's first relationship, the moving on stage, or even the search for who you are and what you really want to do with your life. To me, it's incredibly impressive what the small studio at Mountains was able to do with a game that was supposedly designed for playing purely on mobile devices until only last year. The game for me anyway is definitely a must play as it only takes a small portion of time and what you get in return is a short and emotional story that definitely has a sense of relatability to most. Anyway, I reckon all of you should check it out, either on your mobile devices or your PC where the game only ranges from 5 to 8 dollars. Such a great price for such an awesome game. So that's it. That's the end of my critique and analysis on the small indie game known as Florence. So I'm going to put these postscript sections in all my videos just to tell you all what's going down in the next video and just the plans for everything in general. I gotta thank all of you for the support. We are almost at 550 subscribers and we just hit 500 only two days ago, which is awesome. I hope you guys maintain your support as I've got more content cooking up for all of you. For now, I'm working on the 500 subscriber special, which is scheduled to release on Monday the 28th of June at 3am Australian Eastern Standard Time. Hope you all will be around for that. Anyway, I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic week and an awesome day. Peace.